Okay everyone, welcome back to another video on Gran Turismo Sport. We're back with our final ever Monday video on GT Sport with this week's new daily races. So starting the week off, we have daily race A at Brown Hatch Indy version in the Yaris GR. Now this combination is actually quite fun, but yeah, you're going to probably get a lot of chaos. As usual, daily race A, a little bit of chaos, no penalty system, tends to lead to a lot of kamikaze driving. So let's start from P11, I think we are. Getting a reasonably good start using traction control while I'm not sure if TC off is faster, but it seems to get us a reasonably good start there away from the line. And we're up to P9, I think, nearly there. But we're going to back out there and try and get a good exit from this corner and go down the left-hand side. Now, straight away, we see two cars to our right-hand side, and I knew that they would send it up the inside. So I stayed to the left, and you can see straight away, both of them just sent it, rammed into the guard in front. And yeah, I knew that was going to happen, so I stayed to the left and we're up into P9. So again, as we come through here, you can see a little bit of chaos in front. One car's gone very wide there onto the grass. And we're going to go over to the left to give him space to get back on the track because it was obvious he was going to come straight back over like that. And now we've got to go in at a very tight angle into this corner. So we go in a little bit slower, but we get hit from behind there, rammed right in the rear. And we're trying to slow down after being hit. A car in front of us is spinning already. Not much we could do there. He was out of control. And we'd already been hit from the cars behind. So, yeah, not much we could do in that situation. But up into P7. So, let's see if we can get ourselves up into the top five now. So, we're going to push ahead now to a lap three. And we've managed to catch up to the group in front of us. That is actually a podium battle. Top two look like they've pulled away and are pretty much out of the question for battling with. But the top four, top three here. Sorry, P3, 4, 5. And six is definitely in with a chance. As P6 runs a little bit wide there. We're going to go to the right hand side of the track to try and avoid him. Getting on the grass but just about managed to keep control of the car. And take the tight line and we're up into P6. So just about saved it there. And now we've got to see if we can head off after the group in front of us. So fast forward in briefly here as we go through these corners. And then as we come into this next section we look up ahead. There's two cars battling. And one car is going to go a little bit wide. Looks like a tiny bit of contact there. A little bit of um, contact knocks him off the outside there. And we're up into P5. So now, again, fast forward in the action. We look behind. And the car behind does the same mistake as he did the previous lap. And he just sent himself off into the realm, into the gravel. And he's out of this battle now. So, again, skipping ahead to lap six. We've only got two laps to go now. And we've got P3 and 4 fighting there up in front of us. And this should be good because it should give us a chance to at least get P4 in this race. So into the braking zone, trying to get a good exit from this corner. And now we're just going to try and stay as close as possible and think about where we can go for a move on one of the drivers in front of us. So the combination is definitely fun. I think it's an enjoyable track. It's an enjoyable car. However, I do think you're going to get some crazy driving this week on Daily Race 8. As usual, Daily Race 8 always gives some crazy driving. But yeah, with no penalty system, this combination does invite some very um, optimistic moves. But you can see here we get a nice exit off the corner. We've got the slipstream to P4 and P3. They're going to look like they're going to possibly be fighting into the braking zone. P4 in front of us has got an awful connection as well. You can see it. He's got one red bar. He's lagging a lot. So this is going to have to be cautious when we do come up behind him. But we're going to come through here. You can see he's going a little bit sideways there, or what looks like sideways, but it could be lag. But he goes to the left. That gives us the inside line. And now we're going to be able to make that move up into P4. So nice and cleanly up into P4. And now we're going to see if we can get the slipstream to P3 on the final lap. Now we see that P5 has got the inside line. I knew that he'd send it up there. So I break nice and early, let him go wide. We go for the undercut, and we're going to go straight back up into P4 there. So. Just knew that was going to happen, could see that he was going to send it really aggressively. So just lifted nice and early and got that cut back and straight back up to P4. But yeah, not much we can do now to get P3, a little bit too far behind. And now it's just going to be a pretty simple run to the finishing line all the way. So seven laps at Brands Hatch Indy. It's a fun combo. I do think that it's going to be one of them races where some races are really good, some really good battling. Other races are going to see absolute chaos depending on who you're racing against. But yeah, it's a pretty fun race. So we're going to move on now to Daily Race B. Now it's at the track we never ever do on GT Sport. Lego Majeure, as you can see here in Group 4. It's the full version of the track. As usual, it's going to be dominated by the FF cars. Now I decided to final week on GT Sport. Why not get out the Audi TT? It's not a car that I particularly like driving, but yeah. Did a lap with it, put ourselves in P6. We had about two or three laps, I think, to do before the race started. So I managed to put myself in P6. And just see if we can get ourselves into the top three or something like that. Or even just hold on to P6 because I'm not the best with these cars, I have to say. And this track, as you may know, is not my favourite. Even though it is 
pretty much on GT Sport every two to three weeks. So working our way through here with the FF cars, being a little bit cautious on that throttle, trying to put a little bit of 50% throttle in, just wait for that grip to grip, like build up and then flat down 100% once the grip's there. You can see coming through the corner here, P4 running extremely wide in the McGann there. We're gonna stay to the right hand side and see if we can take the inside line into this sweeping right hand corner up ahead. And this is a very, very tricky corner to come from a tight angle. So we break nice and early, we're side by side, both give each other pretty good room there. And that is some nice driving side by side there. And we're gonna work our way up into P5. You can see the McGann also backs out there and I don't think he wanted to battle it. So into these sweeping corners now, this really fast, almost S kind of corners. And you can see that we've got right in the middle of two battles now. You can see the cars behind us are a little bit far away from us and the cars in front a little bit far away from us so fast forward the action um, as we come through you can see we've picked up the slipstream to the I think it's an RCZ in front of us or a Scirocco actually sorry a Scirocco in front of us there so working our way up the hill Scirocco does seem pretty strong around this combination as does the um, TT Audi TT any FF car is probably going to be very strong for here but as we come through to this right hand corner we see that P3 clearly cuts the corner there. Now that has to be a penalty. So as we come through here, you're gonna see half a second penalty for the driver in front of us and the Scirocco manages to get ahead of the Audi TT. So he's also gonna possibly have dirty tires for here. So I was a little bit cautious about going too close to him because I didn't really wanna go right up behind him and hit him. So we go tight line through there. That's gonna mean we don't get a strong exit from the corner with the FF, with the FF drivetrain of the car. And you can see the McGann's on our right hand side. He's going to be able to get the slipstream and then cut in front of us. But we go to the left hand side, break as late as we can. And we manage to get our car up the inside and do quite a nice move there. And we're side by side with the McGann through this corner. He gives us again good space through the corner, some good clean racing. And we're up into P4. So now we've got to see if we can catch up to P3. So working through here, you can see just trying to make sure that we cut this corner as much as we can. But we don't really do it well enough. You can see the McGann almost completely over the corner. That is one of the reasons why I don't like this track i really wish they'd clamp down on some of the track limits on lego Majeure. so fingers crossed for gt7 you won't be able to do some of these lines where you're going all the way over the curves i think it will make the track much much better but yeah we're still in p4 now let's see if we can get that slipstream and go for a move on p3 now this race is only three laps long so it is over very very quickly it seems to be like you're doing a lap and then you're pretty much at the end of the race already so again I would like the race speeds to be a little bit longer, but I don't think much is going to happen on GT7. I do predict that the races are going to be very similar. Daily A, B and C. I'm, I will be amazed if there is another daily race that's longer, but fingers crossed it might happen, but I would be very surprised if it does. So yeah, into the braking zone. Braking just short of the 50 board there. Trying to get as close as we can to the Scirocco in front of us. And now we've got the run up the hill. So we've got the slipstream all the way up the hill. Now we're going to go for a wider line to try and smooth the entry into this corner so we're not putting as much steering input in. You can see now we've got a better exit from this corner. And we should be able to get a run on the inside. So we've got the run. We've got the inside line. We're going to break early though because it's very likely he'll cut us off there, which he does. But he goes in way too deep. That gives me the chance of going up the inside now. Now we're side by side into the corner. We hold the apex. He turns in very early, hits us a little bit there. But I don't think there's anything we could do. We had the right to the corner. We were side by side on the inside. And now we're up to P3. So into the final corner. See the McGann has also managed to get himself through there. And we build up a little bit of a gap once we come out the exit there. So they're going to get the slipstream down the straight. I don't think they're going to be in an opportunity to go for a move in the braking zone. So braking just past 100 board on your right hand side there. And down to third gear. Make sure you cut some of this apex. Get on the curb nice and early. And then just let the car coast through this corner almost. Until you feel the grip build up. And then get on that accelerator out of it. You can see we go a little bit wide there. But you can see the gap is almost at 3-4 temps behind us. And as we come through here, I think we build that gap up a little bit more. And it goes up to about five, six attempts. And then you can see there, as we come out the corner, they don't get a very good exit off the corner. And we've actually managed in pretty much near enough to break that slipstream. So that was pretty much it. Once we got away from them, we were able to get to the finishing line with quite a nice gap there. And we caught up a little bit on P1 and 2 on the final lap. Like I say, three laps just doesn't feel enough really to have that much good racing. So again, I'm probably not going to be doing much daily race B this week. It's all going to be about daily race C where... Again, it's not a, not many laps, but at least it's a little bit longer, the race, with it being at Green Hell again. It is the exact same combination that we had about two months ago or so. Now, again, I really wish they would have put a little bit more effort into these last races on Gran Turismo Sport because I think we could have had better combinations, more enjoyable, more fun, more strategy elements. We're ending with a fun track. 
I must admit I do like driving this car here now that I've learnt it but I do think there was better options for a bit more entertainment but yeah we're in the Supra we've not set a qualifying time we're starting P10 a lot of people not set times on this track and let's see what we can do we've got a Porsche in front of us so warming up them tyres going into turn one let's see what we can do on this race two laps at Norschleife the 24 hour layout and yeah it's going to be an interesting one so through the first few corners you see a lot of chaos in front of us there almost three wide it looks like the Porsche actually cut the corner but it gets away with Max Power actually gets away without getting dirty tyres there, I think. So he's up into P7. We're going to try and go around the outside here, but decided not to do that. And then we see an opportunity to go on the inside for this corner as P8's got dirty tyres from running wide. And you can see he's got very, very little grip on the exit there. So we get the slipstream briefly here. We've got the Supra on our left. And we're going to look at going up the inside here because we know that P8's going to have dirty tyres. So as we go into the braking zone, you can see that his tyres, no grip at all. We've got the inside line. However, as we get on the power here, we have a massive moment of oversteer and just going left to right, left to right. And just about managed to catch it and back down to P10. So not gained anything from the start, but luckily we're not out of the race. Luckily managed to keep hold of the car. And now we've got to start again from where we started in the race and see if we can fight our way through. So you can see Max Power up ahead in the Porsche has managed to pull away quite a bit there. He's managed to get two cars in between us. So we've got to see if we can find a way past these two cars as quick as possible. So again, picking up the slipstream from the Supra in front of us. We have a little look at going down the left-hand side here because we've got a nice run, but he's going to cover that inside line. He's going to go defensive. And now we're just going to break nice and early and then try and get a better exit off the corner, which again, you can see we managed to do that. We get much better exit speed, however, we got the inside line now. We're going to go up the inside. We stay to the inside and P9 just runs himself straight into the barrier on the right-hand side. And again, I wasn't sure there if we had connection with him. But as we go back and watch on the replay, you can see we give him plenty of space. He just runs himself wide. So onto the apex, we stay nice and tight. And then as he gets to the exit there, loads of space. But he just runs himself too much throttle, I think, going into the corner. And just runs himself into the barrier. So up into P9. And now we're coming downhill, and as usual at this track, you're going to see a lot of bottle jobs. A lot of people are going to make mistakes, especially early on in the week. So first few days, you're going to see a lot of mistakes. And as we come through here, we see our first victim of a mistake. We've got Mario in front of us, just getting onto the kerb ever so slightly out of the exit of this corner. You're going to see now he just skims the exit there onto the grass, and he's gone, but managed to save it. However, the BMW in front of me, it's a very weird one, just loses it randomly there on the exit of the corner and that's two bottle jobs in the space of about two seconds and we're up into p7 so we're going to skip ahead now a little bit further on the lap and we're getting a little bit closer to the group of cars in front of us there with max power and p6 in it there and seeing if we can get a little bit closer now so working our way through here trying to keep it nice and smooth again norse life it's all about getting a rhythm while keeping smooth while being aggressive it's, it sounds really weird but you've got to be really aggressive but keep it smooth if you make a little mistake and get on that curb funny you'll be spinning and you'll lose so much time at this combination so this again is a no stop race again like i say a little bit disappointing that there's no strategy in the final race before gt7 now these daily races will continue after gt sport has finished so they will still have daily races going on for probably at least six months but it would have been nice before we transition to gt7 to have a really fun strategy race but this is what we've got. Let's see if we can have fun with it this week. We're going to go for a move on P6. We've got the slipstream. It gives us just enough space to go around the right-hand side. And that is going to be us up into P6. So a nice little move there. And now we can chase after the Porsche in front of us, which is going to be very vulnerable on the main straights because the Porsche, not that fast when it gets into the acceleration and main straight areas, the power zones. However, it is pretty decent in a slipstream, though, the Porsche. So we need to see if we can get past him and break that slip. So working our way through into the heavy braking zone up here now we're going to be fully in that slipstream you can see well into the slipstream braking nice and early make sure that when you're in the slipstream for some of these corners you do break a little bit earlier because it's such a high speed track when you do have a slipstream you're going to be going into some of the braking zones three four five miles per hour faster so you need to take that into consideration when you do hit them brakes but working our way through the carousel keeping it nice and smooth and now we've just got to see if we can follow him through this section because there's no real op overtaking opportunities pretty much at all until you get to the main straight going into the um, back side of the track so right before the end of the lap is the only real place you're going to get a move done from this point onwards it's just one long straight this section is just all about following stay as close as possible stay in the slipstream don't make a mistake so that is what we're trying to do at the moment trying to make sure that we don't make any big errors and just keep ourselves within within the slipstream range so again through here nice and smooth on the curb not taking any big risks just keeping it smooth again into this section not really taking any risks on how much we push the car yet because like i say this track takes a few days before i build up confidence so at the moment we're just trying to keep it nice and smooth 
and yeah we definitely managed to get ourselves much better at this combination because this is a combination we used to avoid but at least now we can jump on it and have fairly okay pace so into the left hand corner you can see that max power has managed to get it looks like the slipstream to p4 so p4 is definitely up for grabs in this race it looks like p1 2 and 3 are quite far away they're around six seconds ahead so it's going to be a bit of a struggle to see if we can get as close as we can to them but let's see what we can do in this race as we just struggling to stay with him through that section there we got a little bit out of shape but just about still on the slipstream let's see as we work our way down into the braking zones that we're about to approach so flat out all the way through this section and now we've got a little bit of a braking zone so just brake nice and early keep it nice and smooth on the corner into the apex and you can see we're fully in that slipstream to max power now so as we come through here p4 on this left hand corner gets all out of shape very easy to do we did that in an fia race pretty much exactly how that beetle just did it and yeah we're up into p5 now max power sends it a little bit too aggressive into this corner he runs wide onto the grass hits the barrier we go down the right hand side and then look in the mirror there he spins on the grass and again two more bottle jobs in about two seconds now just to make sure that i didn't hit max power here because i was a little bit worried we might have clipped him but it looks like we gave him plenty of space there he just had dirty tires and clipped the grass and again yeah perfectly fine so we're up into p4 so a lot of bottle jobs going on in this race and we're going to skip ahead now to the midway point on lap two and you can see we've actually managed to get quite close to the group that are fighting for the lead in this race which is we managed to gain like five seconds so pushing quite aggressively on this lap and now we've got the slipstream so again we're into that real technical section where it's just about really following the car you can't do any overtaking however p1 runs wide here this is going to be a bit awkward because he's going to come right across our line we have to go to the left and nearly lose control of the car we had to avoid going on the grass because if we would have gone on the grass at that point we probably would have spun and been out the race and pretty much down at back at p10 or whatever in the race so yeah we're still in it now just trying to hold on getting that slipstream and we want to make sure that we're in the slipstream to the top two so we're a little bit worried about the ft1 because after that a little bit sketchy driving when he ran wide there he's got to make sure he stays in the slipstream to the top two for us to have a chance because if he loses the slipstream there's not much we can do on that main straight because them top two will just pull away from us so through here again try and get it as close to that curve as possible get the throttle nice and early through these corners some early upshifting as well with the supra as you know about 60% shift, 65% shift is the optimal way with this car. So you can really get away with upshifting a little bit early and getting them, getting that torque out of the corners by upshifting and reducing some of that wheel spin as well. So again, into the braking zone here, trying to take break as late as possible and get a wider line in. You can see P3 goes a little bit too deep into the corner. Again, he's very close to losing the slipstream to the top two here. So not much we can do again. You want to get past but in this situation there is nothing you can really do you just got to stay behind him and just wait for the opportunity on the main straight we know the ft1 is going to be a little bit slower on the straight compared to the supra however top end might not be too bad on that car in the slipstream so again we're going to see if we can go past him we go to the right hand side of the track we have a little look up the inside but sadly that's too risky back out of it he goes a little bit deep into the corner and then into his left hand corner he goes a little bit too deep again he runs onto the grass he's got all out of shape he's got dirty tires we go up the inside and take that position for a p3 however you can see that we've not got the slipstream though to p1 and 2 and this is really frustrating because there's nothing we can do at this point once we've got no slipstream for the straight like i say them two are going to be well well and truly gone because p2's got a slip to p1 we're not in the slip but we have secured p3 so fast forward in the main straight you can see they're going side by side they're getting that gap up to around 1.3 seconds and they're going to go side by side through here so as they're going side by side you can see that it looks like one car goes a little bit out of shape i think he hit the barrier or something there but he manages to and goes right in front of me and yeah again not much we can do there we just have to settle for a p3 but close one if we would have managed to get past the ft1 a little bit sooner or he stayed in the slipstream i think it could have been a four-way battle for the win but we'll take that p10 to p3 it's going to be a fun week again i do enjoy this track just wish there was some form of strategy in it but it is what it is so yeah let's see how it goes for the rest of the week but if you haven't already subscribed to the channel make sure you hit that subscription button hit the notification button so you don't miss any future videos and give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it thanks again for watching everyone